Well, it's very kind of you, Donald, but I've got some bad news for you. The state visit, the much-anticipated state visit, the one that Theresa May tried to get in there quickly and to offer as a means of welcoming a US president who was pro the UK, pro Brexit, pro trade deals with us. Uh, unfortunately, we hear today it's all being downgraded to being a working visit. Uh, much of this done because of fears of mass protests, uh, but also I do rather think that the United Kingdom government are somewhat politically correct when it comes to Donald Trump and some of the views that he espouses. So it's going to be downgraded and there'll be some that are very happy. I mean, the common speaker, John Burko, declared, of course, that the president would not be allowed to address the joint houses of parliament. Uh, uh, but, but I, folks, isn't this mad? I mean, come on. Trump went to visit... President Macron in Paris on Bastille Day. I mean, the biggest day of celebration and ceremony that takes place in that country. He's been to the Vatican and met the Pope. He's been to meet King Philippe of Belgium at the Royal Palace in Brussels. He went, of course, and did a very major speech in Warsaw. Equally, he went to Saudi Arabia um, and was welcomed there by the royal family. Uh, I mean, virtually everywhere he goes... You know, he is given a full state visit, and yet, with this country, it has been decided, no, he'll come in early 2018, he will not go to Buckingham Pal Palace for dinner, he will not stay in Buckingham Palace, he'll probably stay with the... United States' his new ambassador, Woody Johnson, and they've got a residence down in Battersea uh, that is about to open. He, he perhaps could even cut the tape on that when he's here. So it's all been downgraded. And what I'm saying, I'm asking you for your opinion, really, is is this not the biggest insult to a democratically elected US president? The rest of the world rolls out the red carpet, but for us, it'll be a working visit, sort of, you know, almost back to the days of Harold Wilson, beer and sandwiches in Downing Street. So let's get your opinions on this. Um, if you think, good, he doesn't deserve a full state visit, then call me on 0345 6060 or perhaps you might think, like me, that we should extend the full courtesy to the most important man in the world and a friend of our country, then text 84850. Maybe you think we should scrub the whole thing altogether, in which case you can tweet using the hashtag Farage and LBC and LBC and you can watch me on Facebook. I'm here just off Fifth Avenue, literally a few blocks away from the Trump Tower. Uh, and I have to say, you know, my view is, I've said this from the start, whether you like Trump or you don't like Trump, he is the most powerful man in the world. And unlike Obama, he actually likes our country. Yeah, sure, I know. There's a big trade dispute going on, uh, you, you know, on, on, on aeroplanes at the minute, and that's happening, and, and, and Northern Ireland is pushing, and yeah, no one's ever said that a trade deal would be simple, but hey, there's an administration here that wants to look at having that trade deal. We've got a relationship through NATO. We share more intelligence with the US than with any other country in the world. It's a relationship that matters. And if the French can give a Bastille Day massive welcome to the US president, surely, surely, Mrs May, we can do a little bit better than this. And knowing the president as I do a bit, uh, the one thing I have been very struck by is his respect, indeed reverence, for the Queen and the royal family. Uh, it's something that his mother, who of course was a Scot and she was a massive fan of the Queen, and that I think is where he he, he got it from. Uh, and I, I think there will be some quite considerable disappointment in the White House today about this decision. But that's what I think. What do you think? Simon in Newcastle is a new caller. Simon, good evening. Is this not a real insult, a kick in the teeth for the US president? Hi, Nigel. Thanks for taking me call. It not certainly so. is the most powerful man in the world. Regardless of whether you think he's right or wrong, you have to give him the respect and dignity that the position deserves, whether you know you don't like him or not. We give it to China and Japan, who have some of the worst humanitarian catastrophes, um, yet we still give the full regalia to them. Um, we're coming out of Brexit, and yes, I voted out, and yes, I would still vote out, 
Um, right. <laughs> well, we... well, well, well at, at least, Simon, unlike the Prime Minister, you're able to answer <laughs> that question. <laughs> yeah, uh, but we are going to have, by coming out of Brexit, to trade more with the USA. Now, not only are we disrespecting um, Donald Trump, we're yep. disrespecting industry in the USA, and they're going to be looking at our response to Donald Trump and probably look less favourably on us for deals in the future. Simon, why do you think the UK government have lost their nerve on this? I don't think it's so much... Well, yeah, it, it is. It's um, Theresa May not being strong enough. Um, uh, for all, I'm not a particularly conservative person, and I'm not... Um, Margaret Thatcher wouldn't have put up with this. Um, she would have put everybody in that place, especially in Europe, as, as have you, <laughs> excellently. Um, it, needs, it just needs stronger leadership. She's listening to too many people, too many, oh, you can't do this, can't do that, it's going to upset this person, upset that. I think she needs to grow up uh, and uh, take the, uh, the country and lead it the right way make a statement. If it's wrong, it's wrong. If it upsets a few people, it upsets a few people. But at least she's got then some principles. And at least then the uh, Americans coming to visit know where she stands. Yeah, OK. No, so, uh, Simon, thank you for your call. Thank you for your views, your texts and tweets. Ploughing in, extremely rude of us as a country. Sadiq and Salmond should not be encouraged in this ignorance, says Lydia. Well, Sadiq Khan and Salmond, of course, spoken very strongly against Donald Trump. Sadiq apparently is happy for Trump to come, provided it's not a full state visit. Sandra takes a different view. She says that Trump was not democratically elected when more people voted for his opponent. Yeah, in California, they certainly did, but he won the Electoral College. Not an argument worth having, Sandra, in my opinion. Ed in Devon says, Nigel, are you half cut? Well, not at this time of the day. He has become toxic. I still like him, though. Well, whether he's become toxic or not, and whether you agree with the things that he says, whether it's about abortion or whatever it may be, the fact is he is the US president, and countries across Europe and the world welcome him on a full state visit. We were going to have him come to us very quickly on a state visit, which in itself is unusual, because normally, by convention, uh, US presidents get that in their second term and not their first term, but Theresa May seem to think when she first became Prime Minister that doing this mattered because he was pro-Brexit, pro-the UK, pro-talking about a trade deal and frankly I think she simply lost her nerve with this as with so much else. Andrew is calling from Gospel Oak. Andrew, good evening. Evening, Nigel. Now, I'll line up with you on most issues and agree with you on most issues. I love what you've done for this country. Thank you. Um, Personally, let's nail one thing fully and finally. There is no such thing as a special relationship except when America wants to mention it to us to get, and use it as a dog whistle. Secondly, um, if we're going to uh, use every arsenal in our armory, let's do the pomp and circumstance thing for those who we really want to use it for. And if Mr. Trump, uh, who likes that, that sort of blingy thing, take a look at Trump Tower as an example, isn't that hideous? Um, it's it's a really all, a all a matter of taste, Andrew. I've been in there. It's all a matter of taste. OK. Uh, did you like it? I, it was different. Yes, of course I liked it. Mm, I, mean, yeah. I, mean, I mean, I'm not saying I'd do it like that, but then again, I couldn't afford it anyway. But, Andrew, Andrew, the point I would make to you is this, all right? We have rolled out the red carpet for Vladimir Putin, coming to visit the Queen at Buckingham Palace with full pomp and circumstance. We've done exactly the same with the Chinese president, despite our reservations on human rights there. We've done the same with the leader in recent times of the United Arab Emirates, where we've seen Britons on drug charges being tortured. We've done the same uh, with the Indonesian president. Uh, we've done the same... We did the same a few years ago with... Nikolai Ceausescu of Romania, who was one of the greatest tyrants since 1945. We've done this, Andrew, for all sorts of people with extremely dubious human rights records. Isn't it madness to insult the US president in this way? Whatever we think, Andrew, of his views. Um, ask, ask, me, ask me one question, sir. 
Where is the Bombardier factory that's just had all its jobs put in jeopardy, and where does the DUP find itself based? Well, how interesting that you should raise Bombardier versus Boeing, and I thought this would, uh, and this is an example uh, of America acting in a highly protectionist way, something they are very... In fact, they were prone to do it under in, in, in Obama's time. They're perhaps even more prone to do it now. Doesn't that, Andrew, actually make the case even more strongly for us to sit down and have trade talks with America and try and find some agreements? I think it makes the case for having a useful, constructive working lunch with the president and get him to agree a few things, if we will. Well, OK, fine, I grant you that. And I wasn't suggesting that Trump's visit should purely be pomp and circumstance. But, Andrew, I put it to you once again. If we give, uh, you know, full red carpet state visits to leaders from all over the world with very dubious human rights records, aren't we somewhat shooting ourselves in the foot to deny this to Donald Trump? America doesn't have that great civil rights record for the blacks, does it? Uh, I tell you what, I, I, you know, I, I don't think, I don't think whatever criticisms one can have of the race divide in America, it is anything like some of those other leaders that have visited Britain on state visits. But Andrew, you're unconvinced. That's fine. I understand that. I'm going to go to James in Walthamstow. James, should he have a state visit or is this, is this compromise of a working visit the right answer? No, uh, Nigel. So when he first came into 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 the election in 2016, uh, uh, so, so I obviously knew that the Republican Party, in general, compared to the Democrats, tend to be racist. So amongst the racist candidates, even the black hang ones, on, even hang things, on. Hang on, hang on. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm sorry that we've haven't we sunk to the depths of politics where those we uh, don't like, those we don't like, right. we just call. So are you saying that half of America is racist? Uh, not half, but there's a certain region of, of America, like mainly the mid the Midwest, that does have 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 very racial 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 tensions and a lot of racial racial background. And and to look at America's history, say say we obviously know that it is a racist country. Gradually, gradually, it's got less and less racist. But let's not fool ourselves and ever say that America is not racist. Right. Yeah. So James, even yeah. if I thought you, even if I thought you were right, which I don't, so would that be a reason? Would that be a reason for not giving a U.S. president a state visit? Of course, because 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 he's 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 basically called, he's yeah. caused a great divide in his in his countries. He's 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 retweeted racist uh, tweets that are that are wrong in terms of black people people submerging black people. Yeah, and that, uh, uh, that have later come to light that he that he's mistreating it. He's also uh, somehow, uh, out of all the problems going on in the world, he's he's chose to tackle the NFL and black people standing up to uh, the flag when that was only brought well, in. Doesn't in, doesn't in, that that, uh, that doesn't that doesn't need to be, does it, James? A black or a white issue? That is about that is about the NFL and showing respect for the anthem, showing respect for the flag, James. You think America's racist, and on that basis, he shouldn't come. I accept that that is a point of view that not just you, but many others hold. I don't believe in it myself. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC, live from New York City. It's 2.16 here and 7.16 in the UK. As Trump's state visit gets downgraded to a working visit for some point early in 2018, I'm asking you, is this not just the biggest insult to the leader of the free world? Haven't we got this very badly wrong? Um, Yvonne from Telford says, I hope POTUS says, up yours, UK, no trade deal. Well, I, Yvonne, hope he doesn't say that. I think the current row we've got going on between Bombardier and Boeing and tariffs being put on those products made in Northern Ireland shows you why actually us sitting down and trying to thrash things out is really, really important. Donald Trump should be welcomed with open arms. He loves our country and trade is so important, says Simon. But Michael has a different view. He says no state visit for Trump is the right decision. Gaff after gaff. Philip doesn't have an issue with him coming to the UK. Claire says, why would he want to come here? really. Well, because he likes this country, Claire, and he does own a couple of rather special golf courses in Scotland uh, that he's not visited since June 2016. And he's a busy man as president of the USA, but he's not so busy he can't get in the odd game of golf. I've got a call from Los Angeles. David from Holmby Hills, LA, is on the line. David, good afternoon for you, isn't it? 
Good on you. Yes, it is. Uh, good on. Yeah, good. Well, just getting there. It's, uh, it's uh, a good few hours behind. Can you hear me okay? I can, David. So, so David, is this, is what the British government have done by downgrading this, is it an insult and a kick in the teeth for the president? It is an insult, but it also, like a lot of things that uh, the government has done and also the mainstream media done, is it does also play into his hands because... What they try and do, what they've tried to do, is they've tried to silence people and stop things from happening. And uh, a lot of people get curious then and start asking why. Why can't he come in? And uh, it actually creates a lot more of a buzz for Donald Trump. And I think that's a big reason to why he actually has had so much success because people have tried to stop. <clears throat> excuse me, tried to stop him, tried to silence him, and uh, it ends up playing into his hands. Well, I mean, not just try to silence him. They've also, David said from the start, it's impossible. He will never, ever, ever become the Republican nominee. Do you remember that? Impossible. It can't yeah. happen. Yes, I do remember that. Yeah. And then when, then and when also, he got it, he'll never become president. And was it the day before, November the 7th, the day before the election last year, I think it was the New York Times said, there was sort of 98% probability that Hillary would win. So he is good at confounding the odds. But don't you think, David, I mean, I said earlier on the show that I, you know, having spoken with him, I know that he has an enormous respect for the Queen and the royal family. Isn't this just a little bit of a wounding insult? Well, it is 100% a wounding insult, and also it's very unnecessary. I mean, dialogue should always be open. I mean, why would you want to stop dialogue? Um, and also, he's been very respectful towards uh, Great Britain every time I've ever heard him talk about uh, Great Britain. So it's, it's, yes. it's almost like they just... It's just more left-wing hysteria, in my opinion. They just they try and stop it, and uh, I think it works well. And it's also very similar to Brexit. Obviously, you were a, a major uh, force, and I can't thank you. I can't imagine what you had to go through to get uh, to, to to be able to to achieve what you achieved. Oh, David, you know, years, years, and... years of abuse and years of demonisation. But uh, I don't but... know how you did it. I wouldn't have been able to do it personally. And leading up to Brexit, when the vote came, I don't know what you had to go through. I can't even imagine what you had to go through, threats and all sorts. So thank you very much for... Yeah, well, that's kind of it. David, actually, I think, if you look back through the history of mankind, if you want to change things, whether it's in science or business or politics, if you take on an establishment status quo, they will always make your life very, very exactly. tough. Yeah. Uh, and that's and just they the way you... they paint themselves out to be the good guys and you to be the bad guy. And the very oh, good yeah, guys. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. David, I... If I'd, Hillary I'd, had won, if Hillary yep. had won, she would have yep. been welcomed with open arms. And look what she did to Haiti. She absolutely destroyed um, Haiti after the relief efforts, stole all their money, and, and she would be welcomed with open arms. Trump is saying a few silly off-the-cuff off the remarks gets banned and, and, and this thing, and, and it just it just ends up playing into... Well, I'm no fan of Hillary. I'm, I'm no fan of Hillary, David, and in fact, she was in London at the weekend being very rude about me, but whether we should use the word stole in connection with Haiti perhaps is open to question. David, I thank you very much from Los Angeles for your call. And I'm going to ask Tricia in Dorchester. Tricia, good evening. Good evening, Nigel. Lovely to speak to you. Lovely to speak to you. So, are we making a mistake with this? Should we, whatever our reservations about some of the off-the-cuff comments that Trump may have made here and there, should we swallow our pride on this, give him a state visit, and try and push on for as close a relationship as possible? Or is it right to make a stand and to downgrade him? I've got an absolutely different point of view on this, Nigel. Go on. The Queen has announced this evening that she will not be attending the um, Remembrance Service. So she's yes. going to stay in the balcony with Prince Philip. And I'm just wondering if we're not privy to any health problems and that it may have been downgraded because of any, any worries that they may have with Prince Philip or, in fact, the Queen. So well. if, he, if he absolutely accepts then it may just be that Trump is more aware of any other situation that may be going on that we are not. Um, I absolutely think he should visit, um, well, and I absolutely think he should be able to say what he wants. Well, Tricia, we just to... Just, but just I'm to, just wondering if there is another reason. Yeah, just to illustrate your point, that. Tricia, just to illustrate your point, it has been announced within the last couple of hours that the Queen will not lay a wreath, as you said, at the Cenotaph this year as part of the annual Remembrance Sunday ceremony. And that's the first time, you know, since she became Queen back in 1953. She will watch the event on the 12th of November in Whitehall from the balcony of the Foreign Office with Prince Philip. Prince Charles will take her place in laying the floral tribute on behalf of the nation. So, so she is 91, Tricia. 
Um, and, you know, it can be pretty cold and windy out there on a, on a mid-November morning, and I understand that. But even if the Queen's health uh, wasn't that brilliant, that wouldn't stop Trump going to Buckingham Palace to have dinner, would it? Well, it would if, if they were concerned about health. I, I, I think if he accepts, then it may be something that he knows um, <laughs> that we don't. So I do think he'll accept, and I, and I hope he does come over. But I'm just wondering if they're laying down some information that we're not privy to, and it could okay. be to do with health. OK, Tricia, no, I understand your point. The Queen is 91, uh, the Duke of Edinburgh is 96, I think he is, um, and he's just, of course, announced his retirement from full public duties. Um, it could be a health thing, Tricia. I doubt it, as I say. I think even if the Queen wasn't in uh, great health, uh, that would not stop him going to Buckingham Palace and meeting her or having dinner with her or whatever. Chris is calling from Isleworth. Chris, are we right or wrong to downgrade Trump's visit? I think we're right to downgrade, and I'm embarrassed by you that you want to embarrass our Queen to meet this person. Well, well, own... <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry, no, I do. Yeah, well, well, hang, well, hang on, Chris. She has met Ceausescu. She has met. She has met a whole series of world leaders. Some of whom come from countries where women aren't allowed to drive motor cars. Some of whom where torture is commonplace. I, I, I mean, I mean, Chris, you know, and you were you were happy with them to come. Well, I wasn't happy with them to so come. So why are you but... happy for Trump to come when he's just as bad as them? Oh, now, come on, Chris. Are you seriously, seriously telling me that Trump is as bad as Ceausescu and all these other regimes? You're not... He's you don't... his own sportsman, not stand up for their national flag. You know how much the Americans love their national flag and, their... and his own black sportsmen, they cannot stand up for that. Can't you see what this man is doing to the country? Uh, Chris, are you accusing him of human rights abuses? Are you saying that he wants to uh, somehow turn the I clock back on? I can accuse him for a lot of abuses, <laughs> no, Nigel. No, no, Chris, if you don't like him, Chris, I understand that, right? No, I but... to come. So I can throw a tomato at him and, and abuse him and whatever, <laughs> you know, in a nice sort of way. So, so if he did come and he was driving up the mall, you know, on an official... You would have a banner and you would I be would there? I would have a banner. OK. Yeah. And you would object to some of the things that he said and done? Of course. And I, I, I'm, I'm so terrible. You could sort of place him above Obama, what Obama has put things in. What policies has Trump done? And he was supposed to be our special friend, and he's allowed Boeing to do what they're doing. Well, well, very interesting, Chris. Um, had... Had we taken up his offer within the first few weeks of him becoming president, we would be sitting around the table negotiating trade right now, and we may well have been able to nip this Boeing Bombardier argument absolutely in the bud. But, of course, we didn't do it because we're hamstrung by membership of the European Union. And now, Chris, that our wonderful Prime Minister has announced we're going into a transition period that could last for years... There is no serious prospect of us having a real trade negotiation or signing anything with America for many, many years to come. But Chris in Isleworth, love the call. Chris objects to Trump. He would hold a banner. He would protest against him. And, and, and Chris, and, and, and there are many like Chris. You know, they really, really do dislike Trump and see him as a bad person. But whether we do see him as a bad person or whether we see him as a good person, surely it is madness to insult him by downgrading a state visit to this country to being simply a working visit. How does that act and help the interests of people and workers in our country? You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC, live from New York City, where it's 2.30, it's 7.30 in the UK. On the theme of Donald Trump's visit being downgraded from a state visit to a working visit and me asking you whether that's not a huge insult, we are getting some very, very strong opinions. Some of you think it's madness. We've got common interest with America in trade, security, defence. Others who've rung me so far, texted and tweeted me, think Donald Trump is beyond the pale. In fact, some even compare him to third world dictators. I don't think that's reasonable, but there you are. Now, today in Westminster, uh, Brexit. Yes, 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 we can't get away from that totally. Philip Hammond, that ever cheerful man that's our Chancellor, looks a bit like a pallbearer, really. And he wrote in the Times today, 
on this whole issue of are we preparing for a no deal? Because that was, if you remember, what the Prime Minister told the House of Commons this week, we are preparing for a no deal. But Philip Hammond made it absolutely clear that whilst the government is prepared to spend up to 250 million sterling getting us ready for a no deal, they won't spend any of it until they think it's absolutely necessary. And this is to do primarily with technology at ports, etc. Uh, and I think it rather backs up what I was saying, that when the government talks about a no-deal, uh, they don't actually mean it, and, the, and this lot would never actually have the courage to do it. And yet, the phenomenon that we've talked about all year where the political class in Westminster become more and more reluctant about Brexit, but the great British public believe in it more and more, has been confirmed today, and how? A poll by Sky Data suggests that 74% of people think no Brexit deal is better than a bad deal, while 26% think any deal is better than no deal. 74% now think no deal is better than a bad deal. And I am very pleased with that. Uh, it was a phrase uh, that I coined and used publicly during the referendum, and it shows the plain common sense of ordinary people compared to career politicians. Interestingly, also on Brexit, something that, again, I think is going to make the Eurosceptics' blood boil. Alistair Carmichael of the SNP asked the Prime Minister during Prime Minister's questions today, is it the PM's intention that the UK should remain part of the common fisheries policy during any transition period after we have left the EU. May insisted that when we leave the EU, we will leave the common fisheries policy. However, it still remained unclear as to what will happen during the transition period. So, I, and you know the answer. You know the answer. She'll say we've left the European Union, but, of course, we will stay within the common fisheries policy during that period of time, I'm afraid. Uh, and and, and it, it, the, the more they tell us that we're leaving at the end of March 2019, but staying part of everything and going on paying for it, the less and less convincing they become. So, President Trump, the man that evokes huge, huge emotions... Um, we need a trade deal with America. We've got to make friends, not enemies, is what Kevin thinks. Jan says, I think he deserves a straight visit. Pretty disrespectful for our PM and MPs. And, 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 and of course, Khan, not to welcome the President of America. And, and, and it's not just Khan, is it? You know, John Burko didn't want him to visit the country uh, and, and certainly didn't want him to address both the Houses of Parliament. Uh, Sadiq Khan and he have been involved, to some extent, in a war of words that has now been going on for some, some time. And our next caller is... Let me have a look. Who's our next caller? Penny in Walthamstow. Penny, good evening. How do you feel about Trump's visit being downgraded? Fantastic. Fantastic. Right, so you're... Yeah. Would you... I mean, would you, Penny, if, you, if you're pleased it's been downgraded, are you one of those people who would rather he didn't come at all? Yes. So, would you want us to have good relations with America? Well... Penny, are you, are you still there? Yes, I am still there. You're asking yeah. if I'd want us to have good relations with America yeah. Yeah. to a certain extent. But right. I don't know if... It, you, I think that you were quite... Um, you're good friends, or you have an allegiance with Mr. Trump. So therefore, it just seems kind of one-sided that you're even asking these questions. I know it's up in the news. And you've spoken about the other leaders who've come here and had state visits yeah. before Trump. Yeah. I... past, we're dealing with now. Trump is on the world stage. We keep referring to him as the world's most powerful man. For someone who's the world's most powerful man, he goes around pompous setting like a child in kindergarten playground from time to time. Well, Penny, and his... His, 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 his behaviour is quite embarrassing. Why do we want Trump to come here and have a moment with the Queen? What exactly is, his, is it he's going to discuss? Donald Trump needs to sort out what's going on in his country first before he comes and he wants to sit and have, have a discussion with the Queen. He needs to deal with the injustices 
in this country and stop ignoring them. Trump keeps batting things aside. This whole issue that no one wants to speak about and keep referring to it as, 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 as a disrespect for the national anthem. The meaning yeah. has nothing to do with that. It's not about the national anthem. And Trump wants to make it about the national anthem. Well, that's how he... I I mean, mean, Penny, Penny, whether you like his behaviour or not, Trump is a New Yorker, a real estate magnet. He is a long way away from being any kind of politician we've ever seen, certainly in terms of being a leader on either side of the pond. I understand all of that. I understand, Penny, that he may be very brash at times. I also understand that there are some terrific social and racial injustices in America. Ones, by the way, that Obama did nothing to improve at all. I accept all of those difficulties that exist. But, Penny, I would uh, would urge you this. Uh, Forget the fact that I know him, but I would urge you this from the interests of our country. We are massive investors in, in, in America and they with us. We do a lot of business with America, but we could perhaps, with the right arrangements, do more. We share we, more. We, we, do, we, we do more with them than they do with us. And remember, which, yeah. which no one's speaking about, Trump has been saying this from, from, from day one, America first. And don't think that his move with Bombardier and Boeing isn't putting America first, and he will continue to do that. Well, if he does, Penny, there won't be a trade deal, right? Uh, You know, either we negotiate, uh, you know, a free and fair trade deal, or we don't. But we should at least have that conversation. And, Penny, we share more intelligence with the US than any other country in the world, and we're the two most important players in NATO. Surely... Surely... This again has proved to be a problem, the intelligence that we're sharing... Trump is getting information about stuff that's happening here, and before we know anything about it, Donald Trump is tweeting about it. What sort of a man are we inviting in to come and sit and have tea and cucumber sandwiches with the Queen? When Donald Trump comes here, I would personally round up a protest to kneel in any route that he is taking to go to Parliament. Okay, Penny, can I ask you, have you ever felt as strongly about any other world leader or political figure? No. No, OK, it's Trump. So you see him as being a massive problem and you think we shouldn't get too close to him. Fine. Penny, look, I, you know, it's a very, very strong opinion. I accept your point of view that things in America are not perfect, but I do not accept the view, and someone's got to come on and convince me, I don't accept the view that we shouldn't have him at this country and talk about the really important things that matter to both of us. Uh, my next caller is... Steve in Nottingham. Steve, good evening. Good evening, Nigel. Lovely to talk to you. It really is. Um, Penny said a lot of what I want to say. Yep. But I'm going to start off with the fact that um, his own Secretary of State has has called him a a moron, and I think the man... Well, alleged, allegedly, Steve. In fact, the allegation was that there was a, an F word in front of that too. But whether Absolutely. That, but whether that's true or not, we don't know. But uh, I, st- I tell you what, Steve, I tell you what, for the purposes of this phone call, let's say that is true. Does that make a difference? Um, I think he shows that he is that in lots of other ways. For example, I do think he's a racist. And I, I take that from the fact when he wouldn't let his apartments out to, to black people in New York when he was... I don't know, maybe starting out his real estate business. Um, I think he's a sexual predator, and I think his, if you actually listen to his full rap sheet, it, it, it's unbelievable. It, it makes Harvey Weinstein look like, I don't know, look like a choir boy. He's an embarrassment. Um, it, you know, he, he doesn't know what he's, what he's saying a lot of the time. And I, I also think that he's so petty about Obama, you know. He really hates Obama. And I don't know how you can say that Obama ne- never did anything to help the social conditions of, of black people. I mean, what is Obamacare all about, for heaven's sake? You know, that's well, trying to have well, something like a national health service, is well, it not? Well, Obamacare would have equally helped, you know, white working-class people living on the poverty oh, line, too. Yeah, 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 exactly. No, no, the only argument I'm making, Steve, is that those hu- the huge gulf that exists in America between black and white didn't improve during Obama's period. But, hey, that's a separate issue. Look, Steve, you've given me this list of things that is wrong about Donald Trump. I don't agree with you, but even if, even if all of the things that you've said have a grain of truth in them, is it not still 
in our national interest to sit down and talk and try and deal with these issues? Well, not in terms of a state visit, not on his, not in his first period of office. No, no one gets a state visit in, in their first sort of period of office. I mean, they don't, Obama no. uh, only no. got one. No, I mean, by... also, the other, the other thing is, is that you say about Obama is no friend of Britain. Well, you have to bear in mind that the British tortured his granddad for, for two years solidly in, in Kenya. Um, and also, I don't agree that Obama hates the British. He gets on incredibly well with the royal family. Have you seen, not seen those pictures of um, Prince Harry? You um, will go Spain? to the back of the queue as he looked down his nose and sneered at us in the referendum. What a way to talk about your country's best ally consistently for the last hundred years. I wasn't impressed by him, Steve. Steve, I don't like Obama. You, know, you don't like Trump. I understand that completely, but I still think we should be talking. I thank you for your call. Uh, you're listening to the Nigel Farage Show exclusively on LBC, live from here in New York City, and it's 7.46. Nobody raises passions and emotions like the Donald, and the question of whether he should be coming to the United Kingdom on a full state visit with a dinner at Buckingham Palace and a stay over there and meet the Queen, or whether, as we now hear, it's right to have downgraded it to simply a business working Visit. Uh, hugely strong opinions from everybody. I think it's bad to treat him like this. It seems he's been singled out. Unlike Obama, Trump actually likes us. Doesn't the Queen have a say in all of this, says Shirley? Not really, Shirley. You know, it is the Queen in Parliament. It is the government, actually, that make those kind of decisions. And they seem to have lost their nerve, because in the early days of the May Premiership, despite the fact that usually President says that it's American presidents in their second term that come for state visits, not their first, it was May who seemed to be up for a big Trump state Visit. Jordan is calling me from Glasgow. He's a new caller to the show. Good evening, Jordan. Hi, Nigel. How are you doing? I'm doing very well now. There's been some talk north of the border about this because Alex Salmond, who at one point, of course, was fating Donald Trump, wasn't he? He wanted Trump to come and invest big money in Scotland. Um, and then there was a big row over a wind farm, if you remember. Yeah, my understanding was they gave Trump an assurance that a farm wouldn't be built on the golf course that he wanted to build, and then he went back on it and Trump tried to sue him. Um, but, of course, Alex Salmon does, of course, decide what all people in Scotland are to think and what we're allowed to think and what we're allowed to believe. Oh, Trump. no, 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 of, of course, of course, of course, of course, I know. He's a great God thing, of course. <laughs> I, I know. So, Jordan, what do you think? I mean, is this, is this an insult and a kick in the teeth for Trump, and is it deserved? Um, it's, it's not deserved. I mean, I, I'm not a biggest fan of Trump. I think he's kind of a clown. I think he's kind of like the American Jeremy Clarkson if we put him in charge. But um, we're, it's not about Trump personally. The reason that we invite Trump over is because he's the guy that 300 million Americans uh, basically elected to represent them. So when we invite Trump over, we're not really inviting Trump over. We're inviting America over, but it's not practically possible yeah. to do that. So we take their representative. The thing that sticks out to me most of all, though, is that many of the people on the, the left parties, like the Greens, Ply Cymru, and, you know, the Corbyn people, always talk about how we should talk and have dialogue with, with people that they hate. I mean, Corbyn even went so far as to call Hamas his friends in order to uh, encourage a dialogue. But when it comes to Trump, absolutely no contact whatsoever. Yeah. So it's as if he's irredeemable, and yet Hamas, who want to kill all the Jews, or ISIS, who I believe... And forgive me for wrong, I believe Leanne Wood said on Question Time a couple of years ago that we should talk to and try and reach a common ground. Apparently these people are reasonable, but Donald Trump is not. Yeah, this is the new intolerance of the left, I'm afraid, Jordan. You know, good, grown-up democracy means the left and the right may disagree with each other quite vehemently, but they respect the right of the other person in a free country, a country that our grandparents and great-grandparents fought for, they respect the right of others to hold different opinions. And the new intolerance that we've seen coming on parts of the left, and, and, and in my view, Jordan, being bred out of some of the universities, is there are some now on the left who think that those who have views on the right are evil, bad, nasty, and should not even be allowed to express their opinions in public. And that, Jordan, I think, is the phenomenon that you're describing here. 
Yeah, um, a good example of that is LBC actually shared footage earlier of when George Osborne was attacked. Now, I don't like George Osborne. I voted for Brexit, you know. Um, so I don't really like George Osborne by any stretch of the imagination. But the comment section is a bunch of people celebrating the fact that he's attacked and saying that he should have gotten a lot, lot worse. Now, maybe yes, I'm being I know, I know. It's that, a, no, it's outrageous. Fascism. Jordan, is, it's absolutely outrageous. It's outrageous. And funny enough, the first time I came face-to-face with that kind of behaviour was a little bit east of you in, in um, Edinburgh. where Yeah, uh, actually, someone... I'm, I'm embarrassed to say I was, I was a member of the SNP when, when that happened. Um, but I, the one time, actually, I was forced to agree with... When you were on Question Time with George Galloway after that, yes. I hate it, but I was forced to agree with George Galloway for, like, the first time in my life when he said, when he was, like, the only one speaking out about how atrocious that was. Even though George yes. Galloway is probably more polar opposite to you than anyone, even he somehow saw that that was wrong, and yet the SNP, Angus Robertson, but, stood by it, if I remember correctly. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, no, no, no. I mean, I mean actually, despite the thuggish behaviour of those people, uh, Sam and the others would not apologise for that behaviour. Can you imagine, Jordan, if some of my UKIP supporters had accosted Peter Mandelson getting off a train somewhere in the country, shouted all sorts of, of horrible abuse at him, um, and if he'd had to be locked in a pub as I was for his safety, I would have been painted out to be the devil. So there's something about all of this uh, that simply isn't, isn't balanced, isn't on the level. Jordan, I thank you for your call. I must move on and what Jordan was talking about is there is a video on the LBC website of the moment that George Osborne was attacked outside the BBC by a moped, uh, moped gang uh, and they've been collectively sentenced to 19 years they tried to get his mobile phone but failed and I'm afraid London uh, is having more than its fair share of problems with moped g- uh, gangs at the moment um, Deborah in Enfield is calling you're going to be my last caller tonight I think Deborah so you're on LBC you've never called us before tell us what you think Hi, Nigel. It was nice to see you the other evening in Clacton, by the way. Um, oh, I just think, yes, I just think it's absolutely disgusting the way that we can even think of downgrading his visit. He's a democratically elected leader. He deserves a state visit, not just simply a, a little fly-by visit to the country. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I would agree, and 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 there was a point made by Jordan that Donald Trump is the representative of the American nation at this moment in time, and in fact, in some ways, it isn't just Trump we're insulting; it's America. And Wyatt on on Facebook um, has, has has just sent me a message saying, even if your callers hate the U.S. and our president, we in the U.S. love the U.K. and will always accord them respect. Well, thank you, Wyatt, for that, because yeah. this is dis- this is disrespectful, Deborah, isn't it? It is. It is. I mean, I've been to America twice and you couldn't meet a more friendly bunch of people. And to think that we can't afford Donald Trump the same sort of service that you get from any common person in a coffee shop yeah, is actually yeah. outrageous. Yeah. Deborah, I agree no, with you. We need trade relations. We really we do. Need, we need trade relations, defence relations, intelligence relations, all of those things. Deborah, thank you. And I've got time very quickly for Isabel in Harpenton, another new caller. Isabel, tell us what you think. Hello, Nigel. It's lovely to speak to you for the very first time. Yeah, well, um, well welcome to I, the show. I absolutely think that he should be um, uh, should come with open arms and we should all accept it and stop moaning about it. And frankly, I would much prefer Donald Trump to be our leader of Great Britain than Theresa May, who's doing an absolute shocking job. I think, Isabel, that's a minority opinion, but, but, you know, it's still an opinion. Anyway, Isabel, listen, I'm so, kind of running out of time, um, but, I, but, I, but I thank you for that opinion. Uh, and, and, listen, we've had... Uh, my final thought on this is there is no issue that raises uh, emotions as much as Trump, uh, what he says, what he does, but that should not, folks extend to our relationship with the United States of America. This is a pro-British president, a pro-royal family president, a pro-talking about trade between our two countries president. You know, and, and, and we really, I think, are shooting ourselves in the foot here. We should be welcoming this visit. It makes sense for all of us. And, and, and knowing 
his respect for the royal family. I think they will take this as quite some insult, and I'm sure in Washington tonight they won't be very happy. You've been listening to The Nigel Farage Show on LBC. I'm back tomorrow evening from 7. Coming up tonight later at 10, it's Ian Collins. But up next, it's Clive Bull.